Hello friends, this video on electromagnetic induction part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 3 before going ahead with part 4. X induced. So these are the two laws of Faraday or sometimes I mean the two laws can be combined together and they can be called as Faraday's law of induction. He said that an EMF is induced in a circuit whenever the amount of magnetic flux linked with the circuit changes. So that means he's told that whenever the amount, so in, from the last three experiments, he, what he found was that because of magnetic flux, the there is some current flowing through the circuit. If current is flowing through the circuit, that means there is some EMF which is getting induced in the circuit, right? He also observed that it was not because of the flux, but it was because of the change in something, change in flux, right? Because the third experiment clearly showed that, that only during the change, there was an induced current and not always. So he said that whenever the amount of magnetic flux linked with the circuit changes, only that time an EMF is induced. And this induced EMF will last only till that time as long as the change in the flux will continue. So as soon as the change is over, the EMF will not get induced anymore. So now if you take the example of the same setup, you will see that now as soon as when the magnet was moved, only then there was a change in flux because when the magnet is moving, the number of magnetic lines crossing unit, crossing the area that is changing, right? Due to the motion of the magnet. So there is a change in flux. Since there is a change in flux, therefore there is an induced moment, induced uh, EMF. Now as soon as you stop moving the magnet, there is no change in number of magnetic field lines. So there is no change in the amount of flux. Therefore there is no induced current, right? He also told that the magnitude of the induced EMF is equal to the time rate of change of magnetic flux through the circuit. So that means he told that how much induced EMF will be there that will depend upon the time rate of change of magnetic flux. That means the rate at which the flux is changing. How he proved that? So how did he know that uh, what would be the magnitude of the induced EMF? So how did he know about the magnitude of the induced EMF? You remember while performing this experiment, he also tried moving the magnet faster. So what did he saw? He saw that when he moved the magnet faster, the amount of deflection was more. That means the faster you move the magnet, the faster is the change in magnetic flux. As a result, the more is the current, more is the induced current in the circuit. So there is more deflection in the galvanometer. So he told that the magnitude of induced EMF is equal to the time rate of change of magnetic flux, right? So Faraday's law told us that whenever there is a change of flux involved with a circuit, there is an induced EMF and the magnitude of induced EMF is given by the rate of change of magnetic flux through that circuit. So now let us look at Faraday's law mathematically, right? So we will look at the Faraday's law mathematical form. Let us suppose that phi1 is the flux of any circuit at initial time set at time t is equal to 0 and phi2 is the flux at after some time t. So that means there would be a change of flux because initially it was phi1 after time t it would be phi2. So what would be the rate of change of flux? So rate of change of flux would be equal to the change of flux that is final flux minus initial flux divided by time taken. So this we can write it as d phi by dt. Right? Now according to Faraday's law, what Faraday told was that Faraday's law states that, that there would be an induced EMF in the circuit. If there is a change of flux, then there would be induced EMF. So that induced EMF E will be proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux with time. Now it was found that this, when this was changed into an equality, there was a constant of proportionality and it was experimentally found that the constant of proportionality was 1 in all units. So Faraday told that E is equal to, that is induced EMF in a circuit is equal to d phi by dt, that is rate of change of magnetic flux. Now if you have a coil, 
Now, if you are considering here in this case, we considered our circuit as a single coil. Now, if you have a coil with n number of turns, in that case, what would be the induced EMF? In that case, the induced EMF would be n into d phi by dt, right? Now, so Faraday's law talked only about this fact that there will be an EMF which will get induced and the magnitude of the EMF would be d phi by dt. He did not talk anything about the direction. So after Faraday's law came another law that is called Lenz law which spoke about the direction. So Lenz law introduced a negative sign here. Now what was the significance of this negative sign which was given by Lenz law? We will talk about it when we discuss Lenz law. Right? So Faraday's law told that we can induce. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.